Yo, yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with another Fan TV, man. Back after another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. The content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, all right, so I'm recording this Sunday night. Y'all see it Monday morning. Um, if I would have recorded this directly after the game, uh, I wouldn't be calm. I wouldn't be able to really break down and give my thoughts on the game. It would have been very, very emotional. I'm at the point in my life where Ravens losses don't really get to me or make me emotional. You know, you go about your day. I'm a grown man, you know, things like that. But this loss in particular, I was really upset about. <laughs> how the Ravens played, how the game went, everything like that uh, really brought um, some feelings out of me. Okay, so we sit down now. It's like right now I'm recording. This is like nine. It's like nine o'clock at night. So. Several hours after the game. All right, so let, let's talk about the game. Let's get into it. Good, bad, and ugly. And um, so let, let's just break it down. All right, so first of all, you know, I always want to talk about well, what I'm going to start doing now because the Ravens are injured so much. We're going to start talking about some injuries, okay? So Odell Beckham was injured, came back, cool. Patrick McCarry got injured, left with a chest uh, chest injury. I don't believe he returned. For I think for Lily finished the game. All right, so we got that out of the way. Now let's, let, let's talk about the, the main headline of the day. The Ravens' pass catching units, not just the wide receivers, Mark Andrews included, running backs included, let Lamar Jackson down today, right? It's not a one man show. It's not a one man team. It's not, um, you know, it's not this guy versus that guy, right? The Ravens are a collective team. But today, their quarterback played one of his best games today. And all you're going to hear about is how he fumbled at the end of the game, how he threw it. A bad interception in the red zone and um, how the Ravens lost this game because the offense wasn't good enough and that's going to follow Lamar Jackson's shoulders fair or not, right? So when I watched this game, right, I saw that the Ravens have done what they've done in about three other games this year, right? Or two other games other than this one, right? So you go to the Colts game, start off fast, fall off, right? You go to the Bengals game that they played, that's probably their best offensive showing, Start off fast, fall off. The Ravens have yet to put together four quarters of consistent offense, right? That's the first thing right there, okay? So let's, right now I'm going to look at Lamar Jackson's numbers just to show, or just to say what he did on the day, right? So hold on, give me a second while I pull this up, all right? All right, so Lamar Jackson on the day, 22 of 38, 236 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception, all right? Now, the Ravens, I believe, were credited with eight drops. It really could have been more like 10, all right? Um, I don't think I've ever seen a performance like this from really any team, let alone the Ravens, okay? So let's talk about some of the drops, all right? Um, Mark Andrews, now this probably was the most excusable drop, but still a drop. Turns around in the red zone, hits him in the hands. Hey, you're, you're, the, you're the second best tight end in the league, top three, whatever you want to call yourself. That's a catch you make, all right? Now, Bateman. Bateman is touched down in the back of the end zone. He jumps for no apparent reason, right? So when he jumps, I believe that he claps his hands together. He ain't ready for it. He drops the ball. Literally, the ball is coming right to him. If he just well, when gets his head around, catch, touchdown. He doesn't even need to jump. No unnecessary jumping right there. Threw off his whole timing. I can attribute that to him not playing very much. But at the end of the day, that's a catch you need to make. All right. Um, Zay Flowers dropped multiple passes. Lamar hit him uh, play action deep in route. Uh, great throw. He's worried about his next move. Drops the ball. OK. Um, Justice Hill fumble. Uh, Justice Hill, I thought, was once again the Ravens best running back. All right. Um, listen, I know Gus, Hill, Gus Edwards, excuse me, is more of the every down pounded running back. I get all of that. Uh, but for my money. When Justice Hill is in the game, the Ravens look like a better offense, right? And that's nothing against Gus Edwards. I love Gus. I think that going forward, he fumbled. Yes, Gus, uh, Justice Hill fumbled. But going forward, I would like to see Gus Edwards be more of a situational back. And J.K. J.K. I, I'm getting all the names confused. And Justice Hill be more of the guy who gets most of the touches, right? Just because of the way Ty Munkin's offense is, a running back that can catch and run the ball effectively, be shifty in space, um, is more suited to what this offense needs, right? That's just my opinion on it, okay? Um, so, their second half dropped as well. We're going to get into that. Then you get into the fact of 
what happened at the end of the second quarter. All right. The Ravens decided to go for it on fourth and two. Actually, no, they didn't. All right. So what happened here was the plan was to uh, fake, uh, you know, try to fake out the Steelers, draw them off sides and potentially get a first down. I think it was like fourth and two. Right. Um, Ty Linderbaum, knowing the plan, Lamar Jackson knowing the plan. Uh, Ty Linderbaum decides to snap the ball, right? Uh, surprising everyone, Lamar Jackson, John Harbaugh, the entire Ravens offense, because he thought that the Steelers jumped off sides, all right? Now, when I was watching the game, before even knowing any of that, I had no issue with the Ravens attempting to go for it, right? Because you want to try, the Steelers offense is very good, you want to try to put, the, put your foot on the neck, I get all that, um, but the play looked rushed, and now it's understandable that they wasn't even supposed to call the play. So, that happened, right? Um, there are a lot of times, right, when watching the Ravens, when watching this team play, that I harp on John Harbaugh's coaching decisions, right? There are a lot of times, right? This game is not one of those games. This is one of those games where the players on the field need to play better and execute better. Todd Munkin called a pretty good game today. Lamar Jackson played a really good game today. Lamar Jackson was great today. Without those 10 drops, we're talking about 32 for 38, probably another 100 yards, 300 plus yards, three touch, or two touchdowns at least, okay? Then you're not even in the position to have anything happen at, happen at the end of the game, all right? Um, now, defensively, right, I thought that besides the receivers letting down Lamar Jackson in the play calling, they let down in the defense, right? This defense played well for about three and a half quarters, Okay. And it was the most predictable thing you could see coming, right? As soon as the Ravens gave up that um, that block punt, right, and the Steelers made it ten to five, you could feel the whole thing shift. You you, you could feel it, right? Um, the defense went from being able to get stops to struggling a little bit. Um, and listen, I know people are going to be upset at Marlon Humphrey for giving up the deep touchdown on George Pickens. If you want to be upset about that, go ahead. In my opinion, this is Marlon Humphrey's first game back, right? I would have not put him out there one-on-one -on, -one on an island with the game on the line his very, very first game back, all right? I would have had him more work in the slot. You know Pickens is always going to be lined up pretty much on the outside. They had him on the slot a couple times, but he's pretty much going to be a boundary wide receiver. They're going to throw jump balls, back shoulder phase to him all day. That was literally the Steelers' only way of moving the football was George Pickens making a circus catch. That was it, all right? So for Marlon Humphrey to have, for that to be his first game back and the Ravens to put him in that situation, I thought that was tough. I, I really did think that was tough, okay? But at the end of the day, as I said three and a half quarters for this defense, right? At the end of the day, the Steelers were down, what was it, 10 to 8, and they needed to drive the ball uh, pretty far, right? I, 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 hold on, let me see if I can see how long their touchdown drive was. I'm not sure, but... Um, they don't, even, they don't even got it on here. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, so when Lamar had to do the interception, the Steelers get the ball at the 20-yard line with four minutes left, right? All right, so the Steelers get the ball at the 20-yard line, four minutes left, 10 to 8. I need the Ravens defense to get a stop, get us off the field, and win the game. This Ravens defense still, right, and it's a, it's a nitpicky thing, but it's a real thing. They still haven't won the game when the offense is, is driving down the field and they got to get a score. The defense still hasn't shut the door on an opposing offense and a winning you are. Got to have a situation. And, and partly I think this is because of, listen, when the game is not sped up, the Ravens can send their simulated pressures, those kind of blitz packages, things like that. And they can bring guys from different different spots. But when it gets a two-minute drill, you're more in a base coverage. You're not doing as many fancy things in the back end because you don't want to blow a coverage. The Ravens simply don't have enough pass rushers to get after the quarterback. They can't get home with a four-man rush. The Ravens have to get home with uh, Arthur Marlette had a great blitz off the edge, sat Kenny Pickett. I thought he fumbled on that play, but um, he did. He held on to it surprisingly. So that's how the Ravens have to get pressure. They have to... Send Roquan, send Patrick Queen, send a corner, uh, you know, send two guys, drop two guys out. They had to try to confuse the offensive lineman. They can't straight up win in a four-man pass rush. It can't happen right now. 
that's a major issue. And I think that's part of the reason why this defense sometimes, a lot of times, can't close out the game. All right. So that's an issue, right? Um, now let's talk about Lamar Jackson's um, last two drives because they were problematic, obviously. Um, the Ravens get down to the goal line, right? Um, after getting the fumble recovery off the pump return. And all right, cool. We know we, we, we think that we, it's a 10, it's still, I believe it's still 10 to 8, right? Uh, we know that we're at least going to get three points right here, make it 13 8. Defense still got to get a stop, all right? The Ravens uh, go on to uh, run the ball one time with Gus Edwards, right? And then I believe that's when they try to do this uh, pitch play to um, to Zay Flowers, I believe, right? No, 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 no. This is when they did the shovel pass to Mark Andrews. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking at the, the plays right here in order. Okay, this is when they did the shovel pass to Mark Andrews. Okay. They don't get it. Then they throw the fade. All right, a couple things that's wrong, right? To me, the Ravens fell back into the old habits of they went very, very conservative second half once again. It was, people have been saying it, and I'm, 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 I'm taking this from online because this is very, very true. The Ravens went back into their run, run, Lamar Jackson Savers on third down kind of offense, right? But on this particular drive, right, you're at the goal line. This is when you needed to run the ball three times to Gus Edwards and kick the field goal, right? Or Gus Edwards gets in one of these three times and we score. Okay, game over. We avoid a crisis. But no, they shot a throw. They do the shovel pass, which is a cute play. Did not work, all right? The, the back shoulder fade to Odell Beckham is bad for multiple reasons. One, Odell Beckham did not look good the entire day, all right? That's, that's the first thing. Why are we drawing up the play for him, Okay. I'm going to be very, very honest. Odell did not look good the entire day. Um, he looked sluggish like he was playing his first game in a while. All right? Because that's the truth. That's who he is. All right? Um, secondly, it was a jump ball fade. Why are we doing a jump ball fade to Odell Beckham? That was a bad It was a bad route by Odell. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. completely walled him off. Completely. And Lamar throws it inside. The Ravens all offseason have been working on back shoulder fades. Right? You run up, Lamar hits him on the back shoulder, he turns, catches touchdown. That's what they have been working on all summer. I talked about it in my training camp videos. That's what they have been working on. They get to the game and they throw a jump ball fade. That's poor execution by Lamar, by Odell, by everybody. Okay. Um, and ultimately, that's that, that ends the game, right? So, I mean, I know Lamar doesn't fumble after that, whatever. So, when I look at this team, they are three and two. I can't say they deserve to be five and zero oh because you are what your record says you are. They've lost two games, two winnable games, two games that they should have had in hand, and so it's now it's like, where do you go from here? You're a team that has the talent, you have the ability, but all you've done so far is um, be inconsistent, not consistently perform. Um, so when I look at this Ravens team, that's what I see. Inconsistency. And if we're going to be quite honest, inconsistent teams don't win in the playoffs, right? Um, the Ravens have put the ball on the ground every game this year. Whether it's Lamar Jackson, whether it's the running backs, whether it's the wide receivers, they have fumbled every game this year. So now think about that and you push that out to the playoffs. And if you fumble in the playoffs, uh, multiple, especially multiple times, you're going to lose the game more than likely. All right. So this Ravens team, they have to figure out a way to be consistent, not put the ball on the ground and close teams out when they're dominating the game. Every game this year, all five games, the Ravens have had a point where the offense and defense was physically dominating the opponent. There hasn't been a game this year where I felt like, Wow, this is a really back and forth game. You know, it could go either way. Every game this year has felt like the Ravens were the better team on the field and they should come out with the victory. And yet, here they are with two losses. The Steelers were dead in the water. They probably still want to fire Matt Canada because their offense is bland. It's, like I said, their offense is really, can George Pickens make a circus catch? That, that's their offense right now, okay? Um, and we let that team win the game. The, the CBS commentators kept going on and on and on about how good this Steelers defense was playing. They weren't playing good. They weren't. The Ravens dropped 8 to 10 passes. 
That's what made the Seahawks different about it, like they was playing well. So, with this team, with that game, all you could do is do the proverbial, yeah, we're going to bounce back. But at some point, just saying that we're going to bounce back is not enough. You have to be consistent. Great teams, good teams, teams that win in the playoffs are consistent. You know what the product you're going to get week in, week out. I can say that about the Ravens defense. I know what I'm going to get week in, week out from the Ravens defense, even if I'm disappointed that they didn't close out the game. This Ravens offense, I have no idea what I'm going to get week in, week out, and that has to change. So that's my thoughts on the game, man. So uh, give me your guys' thoughts in the comments, and I will talk about it there. But it's Gabriel, which is on the Fan TV. I'm out.